destination source. This is the mantra of every audio video router as it takes various inputs and sends them to various outputs. But why do we use them? In this video, we're going to be breaking them down to their basics, explaining the fundamentals, and reviewing some key terms to help us understand what they are and what makes them such a critical asset to any production facility. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Corkman with Broadcast Buddy TV, the all-around go-to channel for all things broadcast television. And on this channel, it's our goal to equip you with the tips, tricks, and know-hows to help make you a better broadcaster. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so let's start with sources and destinations, as we need to have a clear understanding and definition of these before we can start talking about routers. A source is gonna be any video or audio device's output that is meant to feed another device's inputs. Examples of this would be cameras, video server channels, and character generators. A destination is gonna be any video or audio device's input that is meant to receive another device's output. Examples of this could be monitors, capturing devices, and transmission devices. So with that being said, routers are just devices used to direct these video and audio sources to various destinations. For example, a camera to a monitor. Their importance in the television production environment cannot be overstated. They are considered in most cases the very backbone of a broadcast facility. Their primary purpose is to increase flexibility in a facility in terms of what sources can be directed to any specific destination at any given time. You see, without a router, your sources and destinations would be locked down to a one-to-one -one pathway. In other words, only one source could be sent to one destination via a single cable. This shortcoming can be remedied, however, using either a video switch, patching system, or a router, or really any combination depending on your budget and how flexible you need your facility to be. So let's take a quick look at some of the differences. Patch systems will get their own video in the future, but they essentially can be used as a breakpoint between a source and a destination. This breakpoint facilitates the ability to quickly change a source going to a destination by basically interrupting that signal's pathway with another source that is available on the patch panel. This is done with a physical cable called a patch cord. Okay, you may be thinking, that's all fine and well, so how about switches? How does a router differ from a switch? Well, although they are similar, a router is going to be more flexible than a switch. This is because a switch is still technically only making a one-to-one -one connection. You see, a basic switch will have two inputs for sources and a single output for a destination. It will have two buttons, one for each source. Pressing the button for a specific source will tell the switch to pass that video input to that video output. So, although a switch can have multiple inputs, it can only ever send one input source to one output destination at a time, hence the one-to-one. -one. A router, on the other hand, will have multiple outputs. This allows for one-to-many, or in other words, can be expressed as a virtual matrix where a single source input can be routed to many, or all, different output destinations. This is why routers are also sometimes called matrix switches, because there is no restriction on what sources can be routed to a destination. The internal matrix is arranged as a number of cross points. This type of system has guaranteed bandwidth and is non-blocking. When a router is non-blocking, that just means there are no internal restrictions on which inputs can be routed to outputs. Most routers today are non-blocking. Being that a router's primary purpose is to route sources to destinations, it also stands to reason that the number of inputs and outputs would be a driving factor to the price point and how it is marketed. Typically, this is described in a two number format. For example, a 16 by four. The first number tells you how many inputs and the second number tells you how many outputs. So in the case of this example, you could connect up to 16 inputs and four outputs. Some basic routers are designed to have these IO input outputs unexpandable, meaning that they will only ever have a set number of inputs and outputs. Scalable routers, in contrast, are designed with more room to grow, as they have a modular input and output card that can be purchased and added to the system later to facilitate the need to expand or accommodate more sources or destinations later down the line. That's where you might see a router advertised as up to X number of ins and outs. I've seen some routers go as high as 1152 by 1152. Routers can be either dedicated to handling one specific type of signal format, or some can even handle multiple formats at a time within the same unit. For example, 
you could have a router solely used for digital high definition video signals to feed monitors and recording units in your HD broadcasting truck. But maybe you're using a router in a facility that has the need to route both high definition and ultra high definition sources to various destinations. Another example is a router that can handle routing both video and audio at the same time. When you start getting into routers of this complexity, you quickly learn to appreciate the use of what's called router levels. A level is effectively a term used to describe a section or a layer of a routing system. Every router has at least one level of control. Think back to the example of the router that's only handling dedicated HD video signals in our broadcast truck. Because there's only one video format, only one level of control is needed. Once we move to the video and audio router example, however, we need to introduce additional levels to accommodate the addition of the audio signals. Now, with the introduction of separate levels for video and audio control, we are given the ability to perform what's called a breakaway route. A breakaway is just a term to describe the ability to separate an audio signal from its defaulted video signal so that a different audio source can be routed in its place. A prime scenario where this would be used is if you wanted to route a camera signal to a monitor, but you didn't want to hear the camera's microphone audio. Instead, you wanted to hear the audio coming from a mixer which included talent microphones with the music track. Then there's the matter of control. You see, for the most part, routers are just big blocks of hardware that sit somewhere back in a temperature controlled rack room. Therefore, another major part of a router is controlling all these routing changes to which there are a few different ways a router can be controlled. There's the button per source panel, or BPS for short, which has a physical push button for each source sent to one destination. There's the XY panel, which is arranged in a keypad format and can choose any source and route it to any destination. And then there's also a computer application that simulates one of the other two. In terms of physical hardware panels, both BPS and XY panels have their advantages in specific situations. But more common than not, BPS panels are used when you want to pre-program a certain subset of sources and destinations to be available to one particular user. For instance, giving a replay operator six camera sources and their replay input channels as destinations. In contrast, XY panels might be used by a house engineer since they will have to have more direct access to all destinations and sources available in the system. Once you start getting into the more advanced routers, you do start to come across some additional useful features. Macros and salvos are two of these. Macros allow users to activate multiple sequential switching commands within a single button press. These groups of commands are fired rapidly one by one. Salvos allow a user to set up what's similar to predefined routing scenes. Once a salvo is set up, it can be fired to change a group of routes simultaneously. This could be used for a specific subset of destinations or the entire router. Some routers even have the ability to do clean switching on some or all of their outputs. On that note, I will say, however, that routers aren't typically known for their ability to perform clean, glitch-free switching on their destinations. This is because, generally speaking, routers don't have line synchronization or some sort of line buffer on their inputs like production switchers do. This is because line synchronization circuits require more expensive hardware, to which most of the time clean switching isn't really needed or considered in routers since most, if not all, of their destinations aren't on-air sources, meaning the viewer would never see the glitch on the broadcast feed that they're receiving on their TVs or whatever medium they happen to be watching on. Now I know that last part got a little bit technical, but don't worry, I plan on making future videos going more in depth to some of these concepts. But all in all, that's about it for the basics of routers. So thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found this useful. The positive feedback on my last video was extremely overwhelming, and I can't thank you enough for your kindness and support. With that being said, we'll see you next time right here on Broadcast Buddy TV.